Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The warning will be given in a few moments. Hello YouTube and welcome! Frick here and I have a brand new episode for you in my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series for you. As you can see we are still here in KOMA or Epley in Omaha, Nebraska with our beautiful Carinado TBM 850 Cicada. Today we're going to be doing a very similar flight to what we did last time, which was our first IFR flight flying at Class Alpha Airspace, flight level 250. We're going to be pretty much at the exact same flight level today, uh, heading east, and we're going to be going over to KMKE, or General Mitchell International Airport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Should be a pretty fun flight, going to be very similar to what we did last time, but get us a little more familiar with this aircraft. I think there's an Airbus going on behind me somewhere. There it is right there, making all that racket quiet you trying to film here. Anyway, before I do anything else, talk about anything else, let's go ahead and start some checklists and start loading some passengers so we could head over to uh, General Mitchell International Airport. So the first thing we're gonna do is open our checklist. Pre-flight inspection is completed. Cabin access door, closed and locked. Pilot door is closed and locked. Baggage is stowed. Uh, we're gonna kind of skip over that, pretending that it has been accomplished just because uh, we're gonna be loading our passengers in. We can see our parking brake is also on right now, which is good. Weight and balance is computed. Pilot seats are adjusted. I'm gonna scroll down here on my other monitor. Uh, pedals are adjusted. Belts and harn harnesses are good. Normal mask micro inverter that should still be in the norm position, which it is right here. You can see that. Landing gear control is showing as down. Avionics master, we're going to go to start. Before we do that, let's go ahead and do a few things. I'm going to unhide the menu button, even though it never works for me the first time. And I'm going to go into flight planner right away. Uh, so you can see that we still have the last one loaded. So what I'm going to do is go load. And I've created a new one right here. IFR Epley to General Mitchell International. So we are going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit OK. And then if I go into our route... I am going to be doing the default one that they have suggested this time, whether or not we want to do, I don't know, but that's what we're going to do. I've already figured it out in Sky Vector as well. Even though this says pumpkin, pumpkin does not exist anymore, but I'll show you what we are doing. So here is our world high IFR chart. We're over here in Coma, K-O-M-A, Epley, and the first leg is going to be taking us straight to the Omaha VOR, and then we're going to go up to Toto. Toto is what pumpkin was. So even though the game is pumpkin this is a 10 year old game if not a little older than that so it is going to be total other than that all the other points still exist so we're going to hop on that j100 jetway and then we're going to be following over to geordie to caper and then over to the du dubuque I, I think that's how you pronounce it dubuque uh vor from there we're going to continue going on that j100 until we get to cotton from cotton we're going to deviate from the jetways and head direct to KMKE, or General Mitchell International Airport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Probably around here, we're gonna expect our vectors for our ILS approach. I'm not sure which approach that is gonna be yet. So hopefully uh, hopefully we're able to figure that out. And also we could probably expect our descent to start around here as well, uh, because we will be at flight level 250. Remember when you're flying east, you usually wanna have a odd parity or odd, um, uh, odd number for your uh, IFR, for your, your, your flight level is the word I am looking for. When you're heading west, you want that even one. Similar to when you're flying VFR, except you don't do the plus 500 like you do VFR, you're just flying right at the levels that you want. Also, we want this up to 2500, so flight level 250. I'm gonna hit okay on that. I'm gonna actually cancel out of that. And I think, oh, wrong button. What am I doing? Flight planner is what I want. Load, load, okay, okay. No, I don't wanna move our aircraft. So with that completed, sorry it took all that, you know, button clicking to get it right. We're gonna go into FS passengers and start a flight. So we're gonna load this current, load this current aircraft. We got four passengers who are ready and willing to fly with us. So let's go ahead and click okay. 
Our fuel load, we're at 65%. I'm gonna bump that up to about 80%. I'm not gonna go full fuel. We don't need that much fuel. It's only about 400 miles to get there. We're gonna load in our passengers. There's two, and there is two. And then we're also gonna load in some cargo. We're gonna, we're just gonna load this plane up. I don't even know if it can carry this much in real life. But we're just gonna pretend it can carry 500 pounds. There is a super, super amount of, I, I don't know, some, uh, we're, we're carrying Nintendo Switches this time. They had a shortage in Milwaukee, so we're gonna have to take Nintendo Switches from Omaha and bring them up there because there's a lot of kids who wanna play with their Nintendo Switch. That's, you, you, just go with it, just go with it. I, I'm losing ideas, I, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna do a destination again because again, I'm just kinda pushing out this video. I never did as much flight planning as I probably should have, so I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take. In Sky Vector, I think it said it was gonna take me about one plus 37, uh, so one hour and 37 minutes. Uh, whether it's actually gonna take that long or not, I. Don't know. I never really did all my flight planning with the climb, the cruise, and descent, and all of that. So we're just gonna go with it. This is also gonna be a normal flight, so we're not doing a tour, and we're definitely not doing aerobatics in this aircraft. So we're just gonna do a normal flight and set flight type. And with that being said, we can go okay, real time load. Yes, it's gonna take two minutes. We can see we have four passengers. Here's our takeoff weight of 7,484 pounds. Fuel, 1,612 pounds. Center of gravity is a little off at 1%, but it's not a big deal. Never exceed speed is gonna be 266 knots. And uh, we got flaps at 135. We're gonna go ahead and start this. So, start flight. We're gonna have to hit shift E to open up the door so the passengers can start getting in. I'm gonna pull up my checklist again and we'll continue on. So the first thing I need to go is go into avionics. Oh, we'll close, or put these down again. And this is gonna go to the start position. And then ignition is gonna be on auto. Where is that? Right there. Starter switch is maintaining off right now. Authorization for engine start. Hey, can I get engine start? Why, yes, sir, you can. So we got our authorization for engine start. So let's turn on the pilot oxygen and keep the passenger oxygen off. Uh, and then we're gonna go to co-pilot mass, press button. Uh, they're all tested. We're gonna pretend that's all right. Passenger briefings, everybody, we are going to General Mitchell International Airport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Enjoy your flight. Everybody get into your seats. Keep your tables and trays in the upright and stowed position, locked position. And uh, yeah, cast display. Um, we never turned on our battery yet. So let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna be up here. Bat. I'm gonna get this out of the way too because I don't want that. So you can see that this is getting set up and we still have those air messages that are, are not air messages, but warnings and cautions that are associated from having an engine that is turned off. Fuel, we're gonna check that quantity. So if I come down here, we can see that our quantity is out 120 pounds each, uh, which is, we, we started at 150 last time. So we got 60 pounds less gas, but we should definitely have enough. Then I'm gonna come up here to the exterior lights. Uh, strobe, we're not gonna be turning that on. Um, nav lights, we will turn that on at this time. <laughs> Flashlight, we don't need that. So we're now we're at the certain engine using airplane power checklist. Electrical power is still on battery. Engine controls are making sure that the manual override is not on. Engine controls are right here. They're all kind of free and correct right now. Power leveler is idle, which you can see right there. Propeller governor is gonna go to max RPM. Condition lever right here is gonna be in the cutoff position. From there, we're gonna go to flaps up, which they are. Fuel panel, we're gonna turn on the auxiliary boost pump. So let's go ahead and do that. And propeller area clear, all clear, all clear. Then we're gonna go into the flow of starting the actual engine. So we've got the ignition switch on. We're gonna start monitoring the engine startups as it's happening. You can see that it is starting to spin right there. Go up to low idle right now with our condition lever. Make sure that we're not moving. We are not. 
turn those puppies off. From there, we can turn our starter off. Ignition is going to go to auto. It's on on right now. Ignition. Auto. Boost pump is going to go into the auto position as well. Condition lever, we can pull that into the high idle position, which we are doing right now. Engine instruments, we can continue to monitor them and check them. All right here. We're going to go up here, turn off our oxygen, and we'll start getting our airs on as well, and we'll see these associated messages come off. So you can see right now that we have auto fuel selected, and we need to turn that on right there. Pedo heat not on, so we can go ahead and turn on our pedo heat if we would like, and we'll go ahead and turn on our airframe de-ice. Also, I'm going to come up here and turn avionics onto the on position, so you can see all of these are now starting up. This is a lot of checklists. Holy cow. All right. Got to scroll down on my checklist because then it goes into using external power. There's monitoring. We're monitoring like a champ right now. And going to go into after starting checklist generator on main. Avionics master is on. Autopilot trims are going to come to the on position as well. So click and click. Oxygen supply is all adjusted. PFD brightnesses are adjusted. Bleed is auto. Air conditioner, auto. Standby instruments are checked. A lot of things are just getting checked at this point. Also, you can see right away that our flight, pan, flight plan is already loaded into our multi-function display, which is kind of nice. The game does that for us again because I don't really want to spend the time to type it all into here. It would take a little while, and I'm sure you guys don't want to watch that much of me, <laughs> me just creating a flight plan in there. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the seatbelt sign and shut our door. Main exit is closing, as you can see right there. Third step is going to also come on at this time. Master Caution is just letting us know that the initial separator is on, but we are on the ground and I don't want anything going into our engine and, you know, clogging it up because that sounds like a very terrible thing. I'm also going to take my feet off the brakes, turn on our parking brake, so that's also where we get that parking brake warning. Taxi lights, we could go ahead and turn those on once we start our taxi. But before we do that, let's go ahead and call up ATC and we'll request our clearance. So let's do taxi for takeoff options. Tune to Omaha clearance. We're going to do that and request Omaha, IFR clearance. Setting this to 1 1000, and we will acknowledge that. Transponder is going to come on 6636. 6636. Six, six. Now you can see that it took it into transponder right there. We're going to contact departure frequency on 120.1, so we'll make sure that we got that. I could preset all those comm frequencies like I was doing in some of my old VFR flights, but because it takes so much time and it's so hard to do in the game, I'm just gonna be letting the game do that for me right now. Uh, you saw in the last video that I actually know how to operate the comms, but if you want to see me actually operate the comms as I am supposed to, uh, and not just let the game do it by clicking, uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below and I will go ahead and do that. We're gonna turn on the ATIS because we don't know what runway we're taking off from, so we can figure that out to find out what runway heading to fly. Runway 36 is what we are going to be using, and 3033. 
Runway 36 has a heading of, according to, I'm over here on my Flight Sim DV, I'm looking at the ILS localizer because on the runway tab it doesn't show it, but if I go in here, it will. So ILS 36, we're going to have 355. That is going to be different from what it is in real world just because that does change, so that's why I am using kind of that older, older, uh, you know, for the game. That's what I'm trying to trying to do too many things at once, and I'm not thinking properly. So I'm going to set this to 355. And like normal fashion, I blew right past it. Now we got our heading bug to 355. We can also turn our CDI on to the GPS course that we're going to be doing, and I'm going to do my PFD wind and option two so I can get my winds right there. Click back and black. I'm gonna tune to Omaha ground now and we're gonna request taxi IFR. Juliet Echo Foxtrot. Echo Foxtrot. So Juliet, Juliet. We're going to quick acknowledge taxi instructions and let's see if we can find Juliet. Well, this is embarrassing because I am definitely not seeing a Juliet anywhere. So this, again, might not be completely accurate. You can still see that Foxtrot and Echo are correct, but I'm not seeing a Taxiway Juliet, so we might use Progressive Taxi just for a little while so we can make sure that we can get to the right location. Now, the part I've been worried about is I have no idea, I don't remember at all how to, uh, how to do our backup, our pushback. I think it's control P. So we're gonna try it. Oh, wrong button. I wanna turn off my parking brake. Uh, shift P? There it is, shift P. Should probably look behind us, but we're gonna assume that someone is doing this pushback for us. Not seeing anybody behind us. And I believe I can hit a direction and start to turn us, but I don't remember how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the brakes or shift P again. Stop, push back, thank you. And let's pull up our window and turn on progressive taxi. And we are gonna start go, whoa, hold position. give ourselves a little power in our power lever and we're gonna give ourselves a nice like spinorama don't want to give myself too much of a spin all right and here is our progressive taxi Gonna look both ways just to make sure no one is coming and I am not seeing anybody, so we'll start taxiing. While we're doing that, I'm gonna pull up our taxi checklist, make sure I'm doing everything right. Taxi light is on, inertial step is on, passenger briefing as required, parking brake is released. We're checking our steering and we can also check our instruments while we're doing this. cast display making sure we monitor that as well the only thing we have on is that inert sep on cabin pressure control panel cruise altitude so we could start to do that so what i'm going to do is very dangerously look down as we're moving and we're going to put this up to 7000 feet again and i really hope that we are going straight otherwise this is a very bad idea Oh, and we're going pretty straight. We have a Boeing 737 ahead of us, so let's just go ahead and slow down a little. 
make sure that we don't cut him off. Plus, they got those big old engines on them, so we don't want to get caught behind them too close. So we'll make sure that we maintain a safe distance from them. Looks like Juliet is right here. Uh, we're on Juliet, actually. So, uh, Juliet, what yellow on black is where you're at. And then we're going to turn right. So I could probably turn off Progressive Taxi now that I know where we are. So I'm going to turn off Progressive Taxi. Minimize this again. And, man, the cat, my cat, I have cats and a dog. And they are right by my rudder pedals. So it's making things a little difficult right now. Getting a little snow thrown up in our face, but that's all right. Hopefully we can uh, still see. Otherwise, that's going to be very bad. While we're moving, I'm also looking at my before takeoff checklist, just making sure that uh, I will be able to run all of those steps properly. I've already set to 1-1,000. One, one and also 355, so we're gonna be able to follow our departure instructions. Look right, and we'll look left, make sure there's no one there. We're basically gonna be following a nice jetliner ahead of us. and that goes with our clearance. I am going to quick pull up our progressive taxi again, make sure that I am going the right way. Not as talkative today, so I apologize if you're just kind of bored watching the taxi go on right now, but I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm just a little more tired than normal and just not as talkative. So hopefully, hopefully this is not a bad idea to record this flight. I'm just, I'm kind of doing it spur of the moment right now. That is why I'm not as prepared as I probably should be, but I wanted to get another one recorded for you guys. So, um, trying to stay consistent with that. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully it's not too bad. If it is, just let me know and I will try to spend a little more time on preparation before doing it. But I literally picked that I'm going to go to Milwaukee about, I don't know, it was about 10 minutes before I started recording. So uh, the preparation is most definitely not like it should be. However, I did look at the weather. The weather is clear there. So we are good to go on that end. Gonna start turning here. Pulled our power lever to idle. Here's our hold short line, so we can go ahead and hold short here. With that, we're gonna go ahead and set our parking brake. Condition lever is high idle, propeller governor. We're gonna feather it twice. There's once. And there is twice. Go back to max RPM. Prop de-ice as required. De-ice system is as required. Inert sep. Uh, the runway is in good condition without icing conditions, so we're going to turn the inert sep, inert sep off. Uh, flight controls are free and correct. Our trims are set. Uh, all passenger belts are set. Strobe switch is going to go into the on position. We're also going to turn this on, turn this off, and turn these on. Engine instruments are all checked. Batteries are charged. Parking brake release when we're ready. And then we're ready for the takeoff checklist. So let's go ahead and contact Omaha Tower. And we're going to request takeoff clearance IFR. At runway 36 to Milwaukee. At runway 36, ready for takeoff, IFR to Milwaukee. Up at Motel, Quebec, more 7, cleared for takeoff, runway 36. Look both ways, just make sure we're good. Take off our parking brake. We'll acknowledge that clearance and we'll start taxiing onto the runway. Up at Motel, Quebec, 4, 7. 
Now, I loaded the aircraft, so we're just basically taking off from the time that we had landed last time. It's not the real world time, but I am using real world weather, so the weather is going to be slightly different. Uh, however, I don't even remember what time it was, so hopefully... Um, I wasn't expecting to do a night flight, so hopefully this isn't a night flight or doesn't end up being one. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Horizon is checked. Heading uh, is set. Altimeter setting is checked. Lights, landing lights, and uh, are on. Engine instruments are checked and cast display. Everything is off, so we are good on our takeoff checklist. We'll release our brakes and start going. And everything is not set. I need flaps to take off, so we'll quick, we'll quick set that right now. Keeps on wanting to push off to the left a little, so I'm just giving it a little bit of right rudder to try to maintain that center line, which I'm not doing a very good job of, but I'm trying at least. That's all we can ask for, right? And we're going to start to rotate. Got maybe a little too much nose up trim set. And uh, if you heard that beep, it's because of my trim getting set. We got a positive rate of climb though, so I'm gonna go ahead and gear switch is gonna go up and flaps are gonna come into the up position so we can see that that is going up and our flaps are up. I'm also gonna, at this time, turn on the autopilot and heading hold. So we'll try to maintain our heading that we were assigned. Wrong way. It's a little too high. There we go. We're going to acknowledge handoff. That was just setting for our autopilot to climb. Oh no, we're descending. So when I turned on autopilot, it set it to where we were. That was not good. But luckily we were able to catch it, and now we're climbing at 1,600 feet a minute, going up to 110. Contact Omaha departure. Got a little bit of chop, and it looks like we're gonna go into some either haziness or clouds. 3033 is still set. So I think it's just a hazy day out. I don't think necessarily it's clouds, but we don't have quite as much visibility as we maybe would. But we are flying nicely. Everything is looking good. Look at our engine instruments and everything is looking good. We have 100% on our torque, good RPM. Everything is in the green, which is basically what we're wanting to look to make sure that our engines are properly functioning. Suction gauge is showing that we are in the green as well, so our backups are going to be working as well. Turn right, 165. A lot of turning. There we are. So our heading is on 165 right there. Guessing they're going to have us start flying down this way and then intercept our um, intercept our own navigation as filed. We're still continuing to climb. We're at or just passing 4,400 feet for 11,000 feet going to look down, just make sure that we have our flaps up, our gear light is up, and nothing is on. We're going to maintain eyes outside uh, as well, just to make sure that we have no clouds coming or anything like that where we could get into an icing condition. Actually, because there are some clouds, I'm going to go ahead and just turn on our anti-ice right away as well. Gonna look up here, make sure everything is set. Battery, yes, good, good. Auto, 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 on and on. Perfect. 
passing 5,400 feet for 11,000 feet. Got a decent amount of chatter going on on the radios, and it looks like we do have some clouds up here, so it's a good thing that we just make sure that we turn on that anti-icing stuff so we don't get iced up in the clouds. I don't believe any ice is forecasted, however, it is better to be safe than sorry. So you can see that they vectored us on a nice little course where we can intercept our own navigation to the OVR VOR, and then from there we're going to do a sharp turn heading north uh, and start heading up on our second leg of flight, all while climbing to flight level 250. Hopefully you guys enjoy this flight. I know it's kind of similar to what we did last flight. I'm gonna quick acknowledge that. It is very similar to what we did last flight, flying at the same altitude, uh, but it is a different airport. But <laughs> with flying, there's only so much that you really can do, uh, especially when you're flying IFR. You're gonna fly, follow either jetways or go direct GPS. And uh, outside of that, you're, you're gonna be flying usually at an altitude that you like. So we're just gonna keep going at 250. I like that slightly higher altitude. Barometric has slightly changed, so we'll go like that. Still have a little bit of turbulence. I'm guessing once we get to the clouds, it'll get a little worse on the turbulence end, but once we start climbing above them and getting above the weather, we'll start getting into some smoother air. Winds currently are showing that we're getting a little bit of a crosswind uh, at 28 knots. So the winds are picking up as we're climbing, which is usually to be expected. Not always, but it's usually generally the case that you are going to be uh, getting stronger winds as you climb. As we can continue to climb out, trying to think of things that I can talk to you about. Maybe I'll do a video where you can, oh, I'll stand by a second. Turn left heading 140. Acknowledge that. All right, so we're resuming our own navigation. So we're gonna wait till this starts to get in just a little more and then we're gonna select our nav mode. You can see that we're also transitioning into the clouds. So when you do that, good thing you wanna do is make sure that you transition from using your visual references for the horizon to your instruments. Maintain that you're doing uh, proper instrument flight. I also turned on nav mode, so it's having us turn a little right, and then I'm guessing it's gonna have us do a big left-hand turn, which is kinda silly. Um, not a big fan of that. Actually, I might have to take this off of autopilot, cause this is kinda ridiculous what it's having us do. It should just have us go to the second leg. Should do a big left-hand turn right now. Why are we contacting departure? Going to 124.5, Papa Hotel, Quebec, 47. World Travel 3757, contact Minneapolis Center. 